welcome to data processing question examples based on AWS data engineer topics by Abilid. We offer cloud service introductions exam question explanations and practicing of real exams. Question 1. How do you least overhead realize streaming log ingestion with conversion to Parquet and store in S3? False is to apply the log rotation schedule which hinders near real-time and an EC2 custom app to convert log files increases overhead. Also, a custom EMR HiveQL script to convert log files generates overhead. Better is to send logs via Kinesis Firehose with Lambda conversion before delivered to S3. Question 2. How do you consistent process Kinesis streams with Lambda and unpredictable performance causing backlogs? Lambda reserved concurrency limits its scaling capability and SQS buffer can't handle streams. Besides, increased functions timeout results in longer execution with costs without improved scalability. But for consistent performance, adjust Kinesis batch size and window to align records to Lambda. Question 3. How do you realize streaming analytics with thousands of IoT sensors and with Kinesis features? It's inefficient to use multiple Kinesis streams without fanout and Kinesis Firehose doesn't process multi-distribution in real-time. And a single, sequential Kinesis stream with Lambda limits throughput. Most advisable is Kinesis Stream's enhanced fanout and dedicated HTTP throughput for multi-consumer distribution. Question 4. How do you cost-effective process financial data streams with near real-time on-demand analytics? Unsuitable and costly is to query in real-time with Redshift via Spectrum, with Redshift via QuickSight or with Kinesis via SageMaker and Glue Data Brew. The solution is S3 for large datasets with Athena on-demand query of S3. Question 5. How do you cost-effective process JSON logs to data warehouse for ad hoc queries and reports? Updating Lambda coding without testing and modifying Lambda parameter with app restart provokes interruptions. Moreover, using S3 to store parameters increases complexity and overhead. You better ingest various Kinesis streams with Glue ETL transforming JSON for Redshift queries. Question 6. How do you improve performance of variable Kinesis streams via Lambda to S3 data lake with high iterator age metric at peaks? Inadequate is Kinesis Streams provision concurrency for unpredictable data. Additionally, concurrency isn't limited and Lambda doesn't scale on it. Resolve high iterator age alert from delayed Kinesis records with more shards, enhanced fanout or Lambda parallelization factor. Question 7. How do you resolve exceeded quota capacity error of Kinesis streaming to app? False is to resolve this capacity quota error with Kinesis Streams fanout or with enhanced CloudWatch monitoring. The same is true with increasing GET records requests. Resolve exceeded quota capacity error with Kinesis app retries or increased stream shards. Question 8. How do you stateful process telemetry to streaming analytics for fleet management? Real-time analytics is neither feasible with S3 Data Lake and Athena nor with Glue ETL jobs batches. Besides, Lambda Lightweight real-time processing is impractical for continuous stateful streaming. You best collect telematics for analytics with Kinesis Streams or with Flink. Question 9. How do you cost-effective realize big data analysis with provisioned EMR cluster and Spark? Wrong is to use HDFS cluster as a persistent storage and x86 instances are costly. Not recommended is to deploy the unreliable spot instances for primary nodes. In contrast, Graviton instances and S3 storage lifecycling offer lowest cost. Question 10. How do you optimize costs for transformation with EMR and Spark during peaks? For fluctuating traffic, never employ the costly on-demand instances. Furthermore, small-sized instances or mixed instances without fleet management reduce scaling reliability. But with managed EMR scaling, you economically handle fluctuations. Question 11. How do you most effectively automate EMR deployment and updates with CloudFormation features? 
inadequate is to apply custom resources for dynamic EMR changes or to use CloudFront stack sets for single environments. Moreover, CloudFront parameter doesn't provide dynamic changes. Better is to map EMR parameters with CloudFront templates. Question 12. How do you design a data lakehouse with ACID transactions to batched and real-time analytics? ACID solutions with bitemporal queries can't be provided by Spectrum with Glue Elastic Views, not by Relational Aurora with Glue Data Brew, and not with Redshift RA3 nodes. In contrast, Delta Lakehouse with EMR provides ACID, bitemporal queries, and Athena Ad Hoc query in S3. Question 13. How do you migrate petabytes of Apache Pig, Uzi, Spark, HBase, and Flink in seconds to reduce overhead? You can't centrally migrate and aggregate big data processing with Glue ETL job, Lambda functions, or Redshift. Most advisable is to migrate with EMR and aggregate big data processing for Apache. Hold on a minute. If you like this channel and its free content to continue, please subscribe to it on the right bottom button. Question 14. How do you cost-effective migrate Hadoop clusters to EMR and a data catalog into persistent storage? DMS migration with temporary S3 or Aurora cataloging is costly and requires overhead. Besides, you can't create a persistent Hive metastore without Glue catalog. The solution is to directly migrate to EMR Hive with serverless Glue catalog. Question 15. How do you most effectively apply data masking before using analytics? Infeasible is lake formation for transformation and Lambda and DynamoDB can't store large, batched datasets. In addition, Kinesis Firehose is inadequate for masking batched records. You better use scalable S3 storage EMR with Spark for masking and Redshift on-demand BI analytics. Question 16. How do you effectively optimize slow execution of a Spark job on EMR? An impractical Spark workaround adds latency and increased EMR memory and CPU or smaller Spark jobs don't resolve the performance issue. Instead engage Spark UI with job performance metrics. Question 17. How do you realize a Glue ETL data mesh with central analytics and access control? Wrong is to use Aurora as a mesh storage and Redshift is impractical for data analytics. Also false is to use DataBrew in a central mesh account for governance. Moreover, RDS can't be a mesh storage. Most advisable is mesh with S3 Data Lake as producer, Athena Analytics as consumer, and lake formation in a central account. Question 18. How do you realize a multi-tenant data platform for controlled department access and data isolation? It's infeasible to provide varied data storage and access patterns with Redshift. Additionally, neither RDS nor KMS manage access control. You best apply lake formation to manage scalable S3 security with bucket policies and prefix level permissions. Question 19. How do you centrally grant data lake access to partners for specific datasets? Unsuitable is to use VPC endpoint to control dataset permissions in a data lake or to use S3 bucket policy for external dataset access. Also, IAM roles don't offer S3 dataset sharing. In contrast, you apply lake formation for secure data sharing across accounts or with external organizations. Question 20. How do you least overhead deploy a metadata storage with access control to database, table, column, row, and cells? You can't control such fine-grained access with a data catalog. Besides, Hive app deployment on EMR is impractical and EMR's HiveQL statements can't control Hive metastore access. But you can use lake formation data filters for database, table, column, row, and cell level control. Question 21. How do you central and governed access a data lake by Athena, Redshift, and EMR? Impractical are individual IAM policies for central S3 access or parameters stored in S3. Not better is to centrally control access to S3 data lake with bucket policies. Better is lake formation for central managed access policies. Question 22. 
How do you realize a central schema for group access to S3 data lake using lake formation? Impossible is to control dataset access in the data lake with S3 bucket policies or Spectrum's IAM roles via lake formation. Furthermore, DynamoDB can't design data lake schemas. In contrast, lake formation centrally controls access to database, table, column, row, and cells. Question 23. How do you efficiently realize a S3 bucket hub for analysts access to customers in same country? It's inefficient to use individual S3 tables for each client or to use individual S3 buckets for each analyst. Moreover, Redshift doesn't manage resource access with IAM users. Most efficient is a centralized global S3 data lake with lake formation. Question 24. How do you control access for analysts to sensitive data lake data with lake formation? Infeasible is to work with database permissions for granular access and lake formation doesn't provide role level security. Additionally, named resource links can't mask sensitive data. The solution is to control access with tagged sensitive data and assigned permission tags to analysts' IAM roles. Question 25. How do you control sensitive table cell data access to Redshift with lake formation features? Neither S3 bucket policies nor lake formation row and column security provide table cell control for Redshift. Besides, tag-based access in Redshift isn't fine-grained enough for individual cells. You better use lake formation cell level security for access control to specific table cells. Question 26. How do you auto-scale managed workflows for Apache Airflow with scaling metrics for fluctuations? You shouldn't dynamic scale Airflow workers with CloudWatch alarms or with adjusted concurrency parameters. Also, managed Airflow workflows dynamic scaling doesn't utilize Lambda. Engage instead managed Airflow with auto-scaled workers based on queue tasks and its average runtime. Question 27. How do you integrate a data pipeline with custom operators and scripts to a data lake and a relational database? False is to employ ECS for data workflows and Lambda functions don't handle complex dependencies or custom operators. Not better is to use step function state machine without customization. Most advisable is to apply managed airflow with custom operators, scripts, and plugin libraries. With the understanding of data processing for data engineers, you are ready now for more details. We wish you further insights with Abilid videos.